So as a kind of typical e-commerce kind of use case, uh, we're going to play with 5,000 uh, movie data set uh, that is a public data set. It's actually from our cloud search uh, product, but it's a public data set. And it will give us the ability to uh, mess around with uh, the search itself, right? So just to, to give you uh, a quick example, if I search for Star Wars, uh, you can see we have sort of a typical search result, uh, actually found 27, I'm limiting my output here. What search provides you on top of the, uh, you, the normal database retrieval, right? Because database retrieval, you send a query, you get back a database response. Um, Databases are really slanted to sending, sending you back everything that matches. A search engine is going to look at what are the best matches. And that's something called relevancy. Um, relevancy provides a means of looking at the matches themselves, each match, and scoring them for their relationship or their relevance for a particular query. So relevance is one big thing that search provides. A second big thing is the ability to take natural language text and apply linguistic rules called lemmatization to bring that linguistic text into a form that's good to match. So we're gonna look at a couple of uh, different sort of things in the back end uh, that will il illustrate those points, right? Um, so before we do that though, let's quick uh, just run a search here. So you can see this is, I'm doing a get request IMDB data is the name of the index that contains all of these movies, uh, and I'm searching it, right? This particular query is match all. It's just going to bring me all of the results, right? And if we look, it took two milliseconds. Um, we won't talk about shards and, and sort of how this is distributed across the set of instances that are running for this uh, search example. We have a set of hits here where we are we're given a, a total, a score for each of them. In this case, it's, they're all one because it's a match all. And then really what I wanted to point out was the source here is how the data is structured. So I just wanted to take a quick look at that. Uh, we have a title, a rating, a runtime, um, a country, why is this? That's a bad example. Here's a better example. Uh, so here's Super Babies, uh, Baby Geniuses 2, 2004. It runs 88 minutes. You can see we can have single value fields or multiple value fields. So we have comedy, family, sci-fi for the genres, um, directors, writers, actors, and a plot that gives us a set of text to work with. Um, so this is uh, you know, kind of the example. If we want to look at a query like the one I ran, if we run, this is again a search against Star Wars. We're matching against the title, the terms Star Wars, right? And so we'll get back then The Force Awakens, and we'll get back, well, actually, we asked for one result, so that's all we get back. Um, so this is the, the interaction pattern. On the indexing side, it's very similar. You have the REST API. You can upload uh, bulk batches of documents and get them all indexed like this. So that's, that's kind of the first, first high level, peel back the covers. This is what's going on behind that UI. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the search engines, um, and if you look at the journey uh, that, that people take, very often, if you're in a small startup, you're going to be using your database as your search engine. Some of the pluses and minuses there, your database doesn't really understand text. So you're doing kind of text to text matching, which can be not very effective. Um, and we'll go through a couple of examples here, right? So let's say I have this text. The XBM 534 is an amazingly constructed great widget, okay? Um, if I were running in a database and I tried to match XBM, that wouldn't work. So OpenSearch has a number of different text analyzers that break out that text into individual things, individual pieces called terms for matching, right? So if I, I could run that analyzer, and if I use the white space analyzer, that's going to just break things out by words. You'll notice we have capital T, the, and XBM 534 semicolon, and AN, and amazingly, et cetera. That's just a straight up white space. This is essentially what you would get with a database. So 
the standard analyzer is going to take that text and apply a few transformations. You have lower casing, so we have the. That means if I type the, upper or lower case, or I type XBM, upper or lower case, I'm going to match it, right? And you'll notice it split out the XBM and the 534 to enable matching within that, that kind of larger piece of text. We also have per, per language analyzers. So there are 34 different language analyzers. And this enables us to um, apply language rules. So you notice the disappeared. That's called stop word processing. The is a very common word that if you match it, it really doesn't have much value. Now, side note, there was a, a band called The The. And I used to work at an e-commerce company, and we had a heck of a time matching that thing um, <laughs> <laughs> because we were stripping out all of us. Anyway, um, you'll see we, we lowercase still. This is an example of what we call stemming. In stemming, you bring words to a root form that enables you to match things like amazing, amazingly, or, well, in this case, um, it's all going to match amazingly, right? Um, this mean, you know, it, it, this gives us equivalence classes between the different terms. So whether I type window or windows um, or run or running, I'm going to match those things because concepts are the same. That is a brief brush through the text processing capabilities of uh, OpenSearch. And I know everybody wants to get to the, uh, the query and the relevant stuff. So um, we have our simple search here. This is, again, providing a Boolean query. OpenSearch provides you with the capabilities to write rich queries against multiple fields with matching, uh, required matching, or, or should matching. That gives you very, a great deal of flexibility in building out your queries. And in this case, we're just going to run it must match against uh, the title field. Right? So if we, if we set this as the back end, then we're only going to match titles. And my example here is Dave, right? So we have meet Dave, that's good, Dave Chappelle's blog party. Uh, and those are our two matches. Now, actually, the title field isn't the only thing that we want to match. So we can easily add matching for the title, plot, actors, and directors. Another common thing you do, and this is part of relevancy, is weight the matches differently depending on what field they're in. I prefer, especially in an e-commerce case, to match the title. So I've multiplied the title score, matches in the title, by four. I can match the plot field. I can match the actor's field and the director's field. And I've multiplied by two, right? So if I run, if I make that my backend query and I run Dave again, I'm going to get, as my second match, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows, which does not have it in the title, it actually has Dave Green as the director. And we can continue to build out this kind of functionality where we're matching against different fields with different weights to bring back uh, better results. Another common thing that we wanna do is adjust for freshness or recency, right? So if I take my query here, this is the same query matching against the title plot, actors and directors, I can build what's called a function score query that enables me to mix in functions based on any number of things. I've added here an exponent function that's an exponential decay that will every 10 years have the value of a match, right? So what we're doing here is we're saying more recent matches should match better. And if I, again, I think I need to do, um, well, let's see. Dave may actually work. Let's see. We have 2008 and we have 2016. No, it doesn't quite overcome here, but we have 2005. So what you'll notice is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles does not have the title match, which is weighted four times, remember. Um, but it beats out um, Dave Chappelle's block party because of the age. This is 2005 and this one is 2016, right? So again, we can adjust the relevance to bring the correct uh, results towards the top. And this example would be a decay by age. So as we look at search capabilities, relevance, text handling, right? 
I wanted to give one or two examples, and I'm not sure how I am on time, but I wanted to give one or two examples of some of the, um, the, the core capabilities around search that we provide. So if I, if I do this, Open Search supports a feature called aggregations. Aggregations take the full result set and then scan the column of values for a particular field to create a summary of those values. And we frequently see that in search UIs where when I run this, and oops, uh, when I run this, <laughs> yes, it's officially a demo. That's not the right one. That's the right one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if I run this one, you'll see we now have what is, must, is a very familiar UI element called uh, facets. These are search facets. Again, they're, they're summaries of the actors across all of the result sets. And in a usual search UI, you would then make these clickable and you would apply a filter uh, that would filter in for that particular value, right? We don't have that hooked up in our UI but I do have an example query of that. So in this case, um, we're gonna match star in the plot and we're gonna filter for Harrison Ford. So the, the idea here is I searched for Star Wars and I clicked on Harrison Ford under actors. And if I do that, I'm gonna see only Harrison Ford movies that are also matching the title star. Thank you very much. And thank you everybody for listening in.